Welcome to the second part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. In this part, we finally get to do the fun stuff, which is edit our photos. In this part, we'll go over the cropping tools and the basic editing panel of Lightroom. So let's get straight into it. Now to edit a photo, you just have to simply select it and click on develop up top here. And this will take you to the develop module where you'll do all of your edits. You can also select multiple photos and edit them all at the same time, but I prefer doing the edits to one photo and then copying the settings over to the other photos. So this is the develop module view. So on the right hand side, you have your edits and on the left hand side, you have a navigator, you have your presets and you have your snapshots, history and collections there as well. So to view your photo differently, you have the navigator, which you can click on to zoom in or you can just click on the photo to zoom in as well. On the navigator, you have these small numbers here on the top right corner. So if you click on those or the arrows next to it, you can change the amount that you zoom in. Now, when you click on the image, it will zoom into the last selected value up here. So if I have 100% selected, it will always zoom into 100% when I click on the image. But if I have anything selected from this drop down, it will zoom in or out to that value. So if I have this at 200, I can zoom into 200% by clicking on the photo. But if I want to zoom into 100%, I can click up here. And now when I click on the photo, it will zoom into 100%. Or the same thing can be done by pressing space bar on your keyboard. Now you can also hold down shift and click and drag left or right to zoom into your photo or hold down command on Mac or control on Windows and you get to draw a box and Lightroom will zoom into that box that you drew. Next up on the left hand side, we have presets. So there are a ton of built in presets in Lightroom. So all of these are there when you first open up Lightroom and you can open up these to see what they do to your image. So hovering over a preset will show what it does to that image. And when you click on it, it will apply all of those edits to the right hand side panel. If you like the preset that you selected, but you think it's a bit too strong or a bit too weak, you can use the amount slider here to change the strength of that preset. So you can make it a lot stronger or you can make it a little bit less strong. And tweaking the amount slider will also change all these settings on the right hand side panel. If you have created any of your own presets or if you've bought presets and imported them into Lightroom, they will also be found here. So I've got all of my presets down here in the user presets. So I could just select one of them and I'll be good to go. Now, you don't obviously have to tweak anything after selecting a preset if it works perfectly for your photo, but presets usually don't. You usually have to do some tweaking to get the photo looking just right. So next up on the list, we have snapshots and they're kind of like saving the progress of your edit. So if I save a snapshot here from this, now all the edits that I did will be saved into this snapshot. So if I change something, let's do a couple of weird changes, but I wanna go back in time to the edits that I had in that snapshot, I can just click on the snapshot and it will go back to those settings that I had saved in that snapshot. And I can save as many snapshots as I want to. So I can just do some stuff and create a new snapshot. And I could also rename these if I wanted to. So let's just rename it. Now let's do a couple more tweaks. This is looking horrible right now. Uh, a snapshot. And then I can toggle between all of these different snapshots that I've created. Snapshots are a great way to save your progress throughout the whole editing process so that if you're going to do some major tweaks, it's a good idea to save a snapshot so that you can always go back to that snapshot, that moment in time earlier in your edit if what you do doesn't really work out too well. And then you can also test out if those tweaks actually worked or if it's going to the wrong direction. Now below snapshots, we have history, which saves every single edit that you do as a list and you can go back in time by clicking on any of these. Now history is kind of like an expansion to snapshots in Lightroom. So you can always go back in time. Lightroom is a non-destructive workflow. So you can always go back in time in your edit with history or with snapshots. So that is it for the left hand side of the develop module. So let's go over to the right hand side where we do all of our edits. First of all, I want to reset my photo because I want to start from scratch. So all of the different editing tools in Lightroom have their own panel. So you've got the basic panel, you've got the curves and the color tweaks and all of that have their own 
panels. I usually start from the top and work my way down to the bottom and then if I need to I'll go back up to do some tweaks. But I find that a good way to work in Lightroom is to start from the top and then work your way down to the bottom but you can always go back and do any tweaks that you need to do. Now the only static elements of the right hand side bar are the histogram and the toolbar so you can open or close the histogram with this little arrow up here. And what a histogram actually is is a graph that shows all the color values and the brightness values of your image. So the left hand side here is dark pixels and the right hand side is bright pixels. And Lightroom will calculate all of the pixels in the whole image and add them to the histogram. So if you have a dark image you'll have a lot of pixels on the dark side of the histogram but if you have a bright image you'll have a lot of pixels on the right hand side of the histogram. Now these corners can be used to show out the crushed blacks. So if I select this little arrow up here and then I bring my exposure all the way down, you can see the blue parts on your image. Now those are pure black, so there's no information there. And same thing on the right, if I select this little arrow and we go up, you can see the red parts are now blown out whites. So there's no information at all in these red parts. But I'll deselect both of these and once again reset my edits. Now in this toolbar you have all of the editing tools. So first of all you have the editing tool which basically just means the basic editing that you do in Lightroom. Then you have the cropping tool where you can crop your photo and then you've got the healing tool, the red eye correction tool and the masking tool. And to start off I actually want to crop my image so I'll select the cropping tool and the basic cropping is actually very very easy to do. When you open the cropping tool you get this overlay and these handles so to crop an image I can just drag from these handles and then position my image wherever I want it to be. And then when I'm happy with my cropping, I can just hit enter to get out of crop mode. Now going back to the crop mode, if I hit O key, I can see different overlays of the grid. And down here you have the tool overlay where you can select to always show the overlay, to automatically show the overlay when you're dragging your photo or to never show the overlay. Now I prefer to always show the overlay, but that is completely up to you what you prefer. And you can also toggle through the always and the never modes with the H key on your keyboard. So that will change from never to always. Now to change the aspect ratio of our carping, we can go up here where it says aspect, click on this little drop down, and then select any of these presets or hit enter custom where we can enter a custom pixel value for the width and the height. Now when you change your crop from these handles, it will keep the aspect ratio that you've selected if you have this lock selected as well but if I unlock the lock our aspect ratio will change as well when we move these handles. You can also use this little crop tool here to draw an area on your image to crop into that area and that will also keep the aspect ratio that you've selected. In here you can also change the angle of your image by dragging this slider or by clicking on this tool and then drawing a line on a straight surface so let's say this beach should be straight so I can draw a line on that and Lightroom will rotate the image to that. Or you can also rotate your image by going out of the bounds of the image and you can see those little arrows and you can just click and drag to rotate your photo. And there is also an automatic angle tool right here so Lightroom will do its best to guess which way the image should be to be in the correct angle. Now the constraint to image only works for stitched panoramas and photos like that so there's really no effect on regular single images unless you do some weird tweaks but we'll get to that later on in this series. But basically what this selection does is it makes sure that no areas outside the actual image will show up in the final result. But I don't want to do anything with the crop of this image. I want to keep it as it was. So I'll just hit reset to reset the cropping and then hit enter to get out of the cropping tool. Or I could also just click on any of the other tools to get out of the tool that I'm using. And then we get to the basic editing panel. So up here you can select if you want to have a color photo or a black and white photo. If you click on black and white, you lose the vibrance and the saturation sliders and the AGSL panel which we'll get to later on in this series will also turn into a black and white mix instead of being an HSL panel. Now I want to go with a color photo so I'll just click on color. Now down here you have this profile. I always leave that as it is so. Basically these are like presets that get applied to your photo but you can't really tweak any of those settings because they don't get applied to the editing panel so you don't see what it's done and you can't do any changes but you might be able to get some creative looks with the profiles that you couldn't with presets but I would never ever personally use the profiles. I would always go with presets or do the edits myself. But if for some reason you do want to change the profile, you can click on these four boxes and select any of these profiles that you have here. And there's a ton. So these are just like presets. They will do some tweaks to your image and you can change the amount. But if we go out of the profile browser, you can see that no settings have actually changed in our image. 
even though we are changing the profile of our photo. But I want to use the default profile, so I'll go down here to history and go back to a time where I had no changes done to the profile. So the first thing we can do here in our basic editing panel is change the white balance of our image. And this will look a bit different if you have a raw file or a standard JPEG. So with a raw file, you have the Kelvin amount in the temperature and you have the tint set to whatever your camera thought it should be. But if we go to a JPEG here, you can see that the temperature is in a zero. So you have zero to 100 and minus 100. So it's not in Kelvins and the tint is always defaulted to zero. Now tweaking the white balance is basically the same for JPEGs and RAW files, but RAW files will just give you a lot more flexibility and a higher quality when you do those tweaks. And if you're learning to edit photos in Lightroom, you really want to be shooting your photos in RAW because you'll just get so much more control over the edits that you do and you will get a much, much higher quality once your edit is done. Now basically the temperature slider will make the image warmer or colder and the tint slider will make it more magenta or greener. And these sliders will affect the entire image as a whole. And basically what you would do with this is make the colors of the image look a bit more natural. So I think this is a bit too warm so I'll bring it down a bit cooler and now I think this is looking natural. Or obviously if you want to be creative and make it a really warm photo you can do that here as well. Now you don't have to click and drag on the sliders in Lightroom you can always also click on the number and enter a value that you want or click and drag on the number to change it and if you want to reset it you can double click on the slider to reset the value back to the default or in a lot of tools you can hold down the alter option key and then you can see the reset text appear and then you can reset by clicking on this text now to change the white balance you also have an eyedropper here so you can click on that and then select a white point in your image so let's say this building should be white I can just click on that and then Lightroom will determine the white balance based on the white point that I selected in the image but if this building was actually a bit yellow now Lightroom will make everything a lot too cold because it will make that yellow part actually white in the image so the eyedropper tool will only work on objects that are white in the real world or on the grayscale so they don't have any color tint to them but all of this being said the camera's auto white balance usually works perfectly so there's often no need to tweak the white balance in your image but if your camera for some reason failed you can use the white balance sliders or the eyedropper tool to fix the white balance of your image or if you just simply don't like the white balance that you got out of the camera you can change it here now going down next up we have the tone editing where we can change the exposure and the contrast settings now the auto button will tweak the settings as how Lightroom thinks they should be tweaked but I never use the auto settings because what point is there in using a software like this if you let the software do the work instead of you doing the actual work but if you want to see what Lightroom comes up and you want to get a starting point for your image you can just click on the auto button to get you somewhere now the exposure tweaks the brightness of the entire image and the contrast changes the contrast of the entire image so the difference between the light and the dark parts of the image and this slider is a quick way to add a bit of contrast to your image but it's not the best way to add contrast to your image but we'll get to that later and then we have highlight shadows whites and blacks so think of your photo as going from 0 to 100 percent in brightness where 0 is absolute black and 100 percent is absolute white so the 0 to 25 percent would be what the black slider tweaks the 75 to 100 percent would be what the white slider tweaks the 25 to 50 percent brightness would be what the shadows tweaks and the 50 to 75 percent would be what the highlights slider tweaks so this gives you a lot more control over the different brightness values of your image instead of using the exposure slider to tweak the whole brightness of the entire image so for example if you want to bring down the bright parts of your image you can take down the highlights and then if you want to lift your shadows you can bring up the shadows but then add a bit of color contrast by pushing the whites up and then the blacks down. So these sliders will give you a lot more control over the brightness and the contrast of your image than the exposure and the contrast sliders do. But even these settings are nowhere near as powerful as the curse which we'll get to in the next part of this tutorial series but these are a great way to get a good starting point for the brightness and the contrasts of your image. But basically to get a lot of contrast into your image you have to have difference between the white point and the black point so pushing up whites and pulling down blacks will get you a lot of contrast. Now, obviously this looks like crap right now, but just pulling on the whites and the blacks will get you contrast but with a lot more control than using the contrast slider. Now going down we have presence and honestly I don't really use any of these three settings pretty much ever at all. Now the texture and clarity sliders will kind of add sharpness to your image and a bit of 
fine detail contrast to your image as well but pulling them too high up will really make your image look like crap so I would really use these very subtly if you ever use them. But that being said adding a bit of clarity or texture to your image so putting them to like a plus 5 will add some sharpness to your image so it might be a good look. But obviously this is all personal preference so it depends on what you want to have out of your image and these are only my opinions on what I think is a good look. Now the dehaze slider is actually quite cool. It will take out haziness of your image so it will add more contrast to the low contrast areas and a bit less contrast to the high contrast areas. And this basically removes the haze from your foggy images. But I've maybe used this once ever in my whole life so I don't really find it useful because if you have a foggy image I want to keep that fog in there because I love the way fog or haze looks. So this is a cool tool but there's really no use for me at least. But for example with this photo you can see that the mountains in the back don't really have that much contrast and the city in the foreground has a lot of contrast. So if we pull up on the dehaze ladder it will add a lot more contrast to the mountains and a bit less contrast to the city kind of evening out the contrast levels of our image. And next up we have vibrance and saturation and both of these will add or decrease colors in your image. But the way they do it is a bit different so saturation will will increase or decrease all of the colors in the entire image while vibrance will be a lot more subtle in colors like skin tones and it will add more saturation to colors like blue or green. But a more controlled way to tweak the colors of your image is with the HSL panel which we'll get to later in this series. So I would usually leave the vibrance and the saturation both at zero. So all in all the basic panel is a great way to get you started with your edit and do some basic tweaks to your image and this can actually be all that you need to do with your image. Now Lightroom has a ton of tools that are way more powerful than the basic panel but the basic panel can be a great way to get you started with your edit and get a rough feeling of how you want the edit to look like and that is how I always start every edit that I do for my photos. Now there's a couple more things that I want to go over so first of all you have this little eye next to every tab and if you click and hold on that eye you can see that it temporarily disables the tweaks that you've done in that panel. Now if you want to view a before and after of the whole image with all of the tweaks that you've done you can click on the Y key on your keyboard or click on this button down here and if you click on this button again you can see different modes for viewing the before and after of your edits. Now to get back to the normal view you can click on Y on your keyboard or click on this left hand side button on the toolbar. Now if you want to dim out all of the tools on the sides here you can use the L key just like we did in the library module as well to dim the lights. And if you want to view your photo on a white background you have the soft proofing button here that will add a white border around your image. Now when you are in the soft proofing view if you click on L it will actually turn everything white instead of turning them black. And then you can change the color profile of the image to, to display it in a different way. And that is all I have for the basic panel which is a great way to get you started with your edit. Now if you have any questions about anything just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. In the next part we'll get more in depth with tweaking the contrasts of our image with the curves tool so I'll see you in the next one.